So uh, quite a busy week this week for property and not least because of the budget which was on Wednesday. Uh, budgets and autumn statements traditionally have a lot to say about housing and uh, solving the housing crisis as it is in terms of the imbalance between supply and demand. Uh, the sum total of what the Chancellor Philip Hammond this week talked about insofar as housing in the budget amounts to the following. Exactly, nothing. There was not a smidgen, not an iota of anything related to housing in the budget. Uh, the budget uh, was particularly centred around, uh, in my view, hammering self-employed and company directors in terms of charging them more insofar as their national insurance contributions and reducing the amount of tax-free dividends that they can take out of their companies. So much for a Conservative government, I have to say, looking after uh, aspirational, hard-working, self-employed and uh, company leaders. Um, but on the question of housing, it was uh, not mentioned at all. There were no announcements relating to uh, money that may be used for the purposes of uh, increasing housing supply, no initiatives around trying to use public land, reclassifying Greenbelt, uh, and so on and so forth. So very, very disappointing indeed. Uh, and uh, I have to say it rather epitomises what I think is the government's attitude to solving the housing crisis and increasing supply, uh, which is that I don't think they're taking it very seriously indeed, and as demonstrated yesterday by an hour and ten minutes of the Chancellor on his feet not talking about housing at all. Uh, very, very disappointing indeed. Um, also this week, uh, very, very interestingly, we've had uh, a number of our competitors announce their financial results, uh, the listed businesses in our competitors, particularly Countrywide and Foxtons, who uh, it's fair to say, as a consequence of those announcements, uh, have probably not had the best week that they've ever had. Uh, Foxtons profits down, Countrywide's profits down, share prices down. Uh, and actually follows a trend for both of those businesses whereby they're both worth about a third of what they were two or three years ago. Countrywide at one point had a share price of £6.80, it's now about £1.80. Foxtons, uh, once valued at a billion pounds, today are worth £260 million. So still a chunky number, but a far cry from what it was when John Hunt sold it, uh, when it then listed subsequently on the stock exchange uh, three years ago. Um, a lot of the traditional estate agents are being hammered, uh, not as they would have you believe because of the market or Brexit or, and so on, uh, but simply because the city are now realising that these companies are not future-proof. They're not thinking as they should be, uh, as the consumer is, about a better way of working uh, and in particular technology helping the consumer process uh, and not least leading to better value fees as well. So I think we will continue continue to see a decline in the fortunes of uh, some of the listed businesses in the space, in the industry, uh, that uh, seem to either not want to acknowledge the future uh, or indeed are pretending to but are executing on uh, so-called hybrid online flexi approaches uh, pretty badly indeed. Uh, also this week, quite interestingly, as I said, it's a pretty packed week for property. Uh, we have seen the Halifax House Price Index released. Uh, there's a number of these indexes now, so through the nationwide home track, right move and so on. Um, the Halifax numbers though were very interesting because actually they showed an increase in February over and above January. January saw a decline of 1.1% month on month, but uh, February, as I say, was an increase of 0.1% over and above January. Um, Interestingly, I've done some radio interviews this week and it seems that a lot of the media, uh, because of the small increase, are somehow now sort of criticising the, uh, the rate of travel, the direction of travel for house prices on the basis that, uh, that things are, are not well. Uh, but I think what we need to realise is that on an annualised basis, house prices are still up over 5% year on year, uh, which despite all of the prophecies and the doom and gloom and the scaremongering that we had around the EU vote back in June and since, the UK housing market has proven to be very, very resilient indeed, has, as indeed has the economy in terms of growth, in terms of manufacturing and service sector output and, uh, and of course, employment. So it uh, seems to me to still be uh, a very, very robust picture for the housing market. And of course, housing, in my view, underpins the economy itself in terms of people feeling good about the house price going up, which means that if they believe they have more equity, they feel more comfortable spending money. Uh, and therein lies uh, the key, perhaps, to assisting consumer spending in the wider economy and so on. So, um, so yeah, lots happened this week. Um, that's my roundup, um, and um, yeah, back soon.